Lucy Bleeding Miller, arguably one of Big Finish's best companions, if not the best. To many, the character of Lucy holds a special place in people's hearts, because her and the Eighth Doctor were their first taste of Big Finish. This TARDIS team would go on to face Cybermen, Crinoids, Morbius, the Metabulous Free Spiders, Glam Rockers, and even have an episode taking the mick out of Top Gear, to name but a few. But all leading to the emotional roller coaster what is Series 4. Speaking of which, all of Series 1 is on Spotify for free, so if you are intrigued by this story, then go give it a listen, because this range is an ideal jumping on point for new listeners. So if you want to get into Big Finish, then this is probably your perfect place to start with Big Finish. So to celebrate the further adventures of Lucy Miller being released this month, I've decided to go back to where it all began for Lucy Bleeding Miller. So, on to the review. So taking a look at the presentation for Doctor Who Blood of the Daleks Part 1, I have to say that I absolutely love this cover because I just think it's so simple but so effective because we've got this nice sort of dystopian background of Red Rocket rising in ruins and then we just have a Dalek there, it's just very brilliant. Then we've got sort of the planets there um, with this nice sort of red brown sort of background sort of colour, it's just brilliant. Then we have the sidebar there, Doctor Who Blood of the Daleks with the Eighth Doctor and Lucy there and the cast members in this audio. The side of the release. And the back of the story, so if you want to know more about this part of the story, then do feel free to pause. And we have the cast list there, and the total our own time for this story being one hour. Opening up the booklet, we have advertisements for the next episode within this series, Blood of the Daleks Part 2. Then we have credits for this release and advertisement for Doctor Who magazine. Now this is a pretty little cool feature about this um, booklet. Now if you fold it out, you have a little poster of Blood of the Daleks, which is very nice with the characters there, what feature within this story. You know, we've got Tom uh, Cardwell, Acting President Clint, um, Asher, Dalek, the Ape Doctor and Lucy, the Dalek spaceship and an asteroid hitting Red Rocket Rising. And we do have a bio on the characters there, the Ape Doctor, Lucy, and uh, we have the mysterious Headhunter. And the disc art for this release. Moving on to the presentation for part two now, we have Asher, a Dalek, and we have some sort of DNA strands there and sort of the ruins of Red Rocket Rising there. Then we have the side banner there again, the side of the release and a bit of bio on the story there and then we have the cast list there and the total running time for this story being one hour. So opening up the booklet we have some lovely cast photos of people involved within this story then we have some quotes from the people we've involved this story so Sheridan Smith, um, Hayley Atwell there um, so if we open to the next page we have this lovely image of a Dalek ship, a Doctor Who fact file which is really nice and this is what I love about the early Big Finish releases that we have concept art and I feel like if you're getting into Big Finish you'll want a bit of help you know visualizing some of these things and I feel like this really helps you you know get into and picture the world what this is and it's got a little specs on the dark spaceship there which is a really nice little attention to detail and this is what I love about early Big Finish but there's so much care within the actual physical product and they really take time with the actual product then we have the next installment within the range Horror of Glam Rock when we have credits and then the next uh, advertising for Doxy magazine and again we have the bio on three characters there and the disc art for Blood of the Daleks Part 2. So what are opening thoughts on Blood of the Daleks? So this story to many people is incredibly special. To many this is where their Big Finish journey began and what a perfect way to dive into the world of Big Finish with the Eighth Doctor and Lucy Miller adventures being more akin uh, to the modern series with quick snappy adventures with the occasional two-parters with this line of stories very much feeling like uh, what if Paul McGann was the Doctor in 2005 instead of Christopher Eccleston. Uh, now this story is written by Steve Lyons who in my opinion is a very strong safe Doctor Who writer but alongside with the Daleks being the opening villain uh, for this new era of the 8th Doctor this range really starts off with a bang. Speaking of bangs let's talk about part one. You are literally thrown into the adventure of Lucy materialising on the TARDIS with the TARDIS systems going haywire. It's a very punchy and fast paced start and what I find rather interesting you know comparing this to how RTD introduced the companions um, where we'd spend time within the episode uh, introducing the companion, knowing about their family, their background, their daily life. You know, this story is very much, um, you learn more about Lucy as the adventure unfolds. So I feel like this um, introduction is very much like akin to A Runaway Bride, the way Russell T Davis introduces Donna, um, which does lead to some funny scenes between the Doctor and Lucy bickering at each other, um, with the Doctor being very dubious around Lucy, you know, which is nice to see a different side to his Doctor, you know, leading to the Doctor wanting to drop Lucy right back home, um, but the TARDIS can't seem to materialise in the north of England in 2006. And when the Doctor finds out that the Time Lord sent Lucy to him, well, the Eighth Doctor goes full Fourth Doctor, Brain and Morbius, moaning about the Time Lord, which is rather nice. So you're left wondering why did the Time Lords send Lucy to the Doctor? Why is she on this witness protection scheme? 
One thing I absolutely love about this story is the world building, as Steve Lyons really paints how bleak Red Rocket Rising is, with acid rain, debris from asteroids causing dust clouds blocking out sunlight, so this is a really cold, harsh planet to be on. Um, you know, so this really shows Dalek invasion tactics rather well, um, with the population lashing out of fear and becoming, you know, like animals. So the Doctor and Lucy soon get embroiled in the planet's affairs with them running into acting President Clint and Asher, but those two characters are hiding something, so you're left wondering what are they hiding and who is this mysterious Professor Martez, um, who is, you know, the locals label as, you know, Martez the Grave Robber. With, uh, you know, this story does take elements from TV Doc 2 stories, you know, this story does take um, elements from Revelation of the Daleks, with using, you know, dead human tissue being experimented on, and we learn more about Martez's secrets towards the end of the story. Now, the Daleks themselves are built up very well um, throughout the story with this mysterious signal and the Daleks offering refuge for the people of Red Rocket Rising. So, I do love how the Daleks build, you know, sort of fear monger about the Doctor that he is this dangerous criminal and, you know, he must be apprehended. It's quite amazing how the Daleks kind of lure the people of Red Rocket Rising into that false sense of security and I love that because the Daleks really sort of play on the vulnerability of the humans within this story. As soon as the Doctor finds out that the Daleks are involved, well, the Doctor soon springs into action um, with him confronting Clint about the Daleks you know, saying that the people of Red Rocket Rising are being, you know, the lambs in the wolves' den. Um, it's brilliant. So I feel like this is just absolutely brilliant. And I think that the story really ramps up as it goes on. It keeps ramping and building and building. And it all leads to a wonderful, terrific cliffhanger. So moving on to part two now. So part one was very much world build, established for characters. So part two is very much more action based. And we go into sort of remembrance of the Daleks territory as we have a Dalek civil war breakout between the Daleks and Martez's Dalek. So this part is very much really exploring Martez and we have quite a nice character twist which does lead to some very interesting um, questions and revelation to win this. You know, why were there already Daleks on Red Rocket Rising? You know, it explains why the Daleks attacked the planet, uh, you know, and why and why do the Daleks want Professor Martez? So this is when the title of the story comes into play. So we expand more on the human Daleks and this is when the story takes a bit more of a moral turn which Throughout this story, there are moments where this story does mirror moments throughout Genesis of the Daleks in a way, with the Doctor facing the repercussions of that adventure. And Paul McGann really shined within this episode of him being quite sassy, you know, confronting the Daleks and, you know, him confronting Asher about, you know, to stop the massacre, which is a really highlight within this story. So the ending of this story, we have the Doctor and Lucy coming to terms with that they're stuck with each other, so they best make the most of it. And throughout the story we see the Doctor and Lucy start to trust and respect each other so this is the start of something incredibly magical um, but somehow I don't think it's going to be plain sailing for them. As we're introduced to the mysterious headhunter so to find out all about that you best strap yourself in for the Ape Doctor Adventures Series 1. So moving on to characters now we have the Ape Doctor obviously played by Paul McGann. Now Paul McGann does a superb job within this and like I said we have a very different Ape Doctor from the full of life and you know ready for adventure doctor as he's quite agitated by Lucy and what Lucy gives the doctor gives back um, but causing for some really sort of electric moments between those characters but um, like I say this story he tries to stay level-headed and calm and collected but he also feels a little bit distant a little bit more reserved and as the story progresses we see the classic ape doctor reappear and we see his caring nature being very protective over the time he has some wonderful speeches about the Daleks which is just absolutely fantastic because, you know, he says that the Daleks aren't the beginning, you know, they're the end. And if you're unsure about Paul McGann being the Doctor, by the end of this story, you'll be completely sold on the Eighth Doctor and you'll fall in love with this Doctor because, honestly, Paul McGann just charms you uh, throughout this story. Lucy Bleeding Miller, played by Sheridan Smith. And Sheridan Smith, wow, she just really was thrown into the deep end and she just nails it right from the get-go. With her having elements of Rose and Donna, and it, it, those two characters just merge together, create Lucy, and it just works superb. It is just absolutely wonderful, and it just works so well, with her being quite bewildered, but she soon becomes rather blasé about being on an alien planet, you know, hoping for free suns, you know, stuff like that. As soon as she appears, you just instantly like her, and she just is a character you just naturally love and just fall in love with. It's just brilliant, you know, and I just like how she is just not having any of the Doctor's nonsense. She's just a character full of fire, and just you know sarky comments and just not scared to speak her mind and she just dives straight into the situation she's in and I love that 
Um, so Sheridan Smith does a wonderful job and I think that this is a fantastic story to introduce Lucy to the world of Doctor Who. Asha, played by Hayley Atwell, brilliantly performed by Hayley Atwell, brings this sort of stern character to life who becomes more integral as the story uh, goes on and becomes, you know, almost parallel to Davros in certain scenes, you know, she's quite twisted, you know, and doesn't care about people dying for experiments, you know, because she's thinking of the evolution of the human race. Um, just a very good character to spar off Paul McGann's Eighth Doctor, and it's just a very good story where, at the end of it, she is a bit of a broken character, and it's quite interesting as uh, the story goes on how we see her character progress. Eileen Clint, played by Anita Dobson, a brilliant performance of this broken character trying to hold authority while society breaks down and struggles for power. Um, you know, she could have left the planet of Red Rocket Rising, but she stayed to do her duty. She's that type of character, and it's brilliantly performed by Anita Dobson. Right on TV, good old Daleks, played by Nicholas Briggs. Now, Nicholas Briggs does a brilliant job at uh, bringing two fractions of Daleks to life, with Martez's Daleks being a lot more slower on how they talk and a bit more gruff sounding. And they're quite brilliant Daleks because they kind of reason, they question um, throughout this story. And by the end of it, you kind of pity. Uh, Martez's Daleks, which I find quite interesting because you don't think you'd pity a Dalek, but these Daleks you do. As for the other Daleks, well, they're your traditional Daleks, what we all know and love, you know, they're sly, devious, pretending to be this benevolent force, you know, waiting in the shadows for their time to appear. Um, and we do get some really good classic Dalek action within this, you know, it's a really good story for the Daleks. So if you love your Daleks, then you're going to want to check this out. So what are my overall thoughts on Blood of the Daleks? Well it does exactly what it says on the tin, a perfect introduction to the world of Big Finish with the world building really helping new listeners visualise this dystopian world alongside the artwork within the booklet. The story itself is a perfect bridge between the classic series and the new series with it being a very classic style story using elements from TV Dalek stories like Revelation of the Daleks and Remembrance of the Daleks but with it being told within a new series form. With easing the listener in with a two-part, it helps give extra narrative space to introduce a new companion while still keeping the faster pace of the modern series. Lucy is a wonderful contrast to the larger-than-life Ape Doctor and the Daleks are rather refreshing within this story, um, with them not all being guns blazing. So to answer the question, is this a good place to start with Big Finish? Well, I think I've already answered it throughout this review and it is absolutely, this is an ideal jumping on point to get into Big Finish. Now, like I said in the intro, the whole of series one of the EDAs are available on Spotify for free. So, you know, you have no excuse. Give it a go. It's not going to cost you any money because it's on Spotify for free. So go and give it a listen. If you like what you hear, then carry on listening to the EDAs. And there's a whole bunch of other big finish on there. The first one to 50 main rings. There's a whole variety of big finish on Spotify. So if you want to get into big finish and you want to dip your toe and you're a bit scared of the financial cost of getting the CDs or that kind of thing, then Spotify is probably a nice little ideal place for you to dip your toe in to get a taste of what Big Finish can offer you. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a thing you won't regret. I honestly, I don't think you'll regret listening to Blood of a Dark. It's a story what maintains a constant, solid, good level of storytelling. And like the new series, we're given hints of a deeper story unfolding in the background. So it's a very good bridge of classic series meets the new series. And like I said, if you want to get into Big Finish, this is a perfect jumping on point. And like I say, it's on Spotify. So go and give it a listen. It's it's definitely worth your time. So what am I going to give Blood of the Daleks? Well, I'm going to give Blood of the Daleks. I was torn between an 8 or a 9. But you know what? I'm, I'm feeling very generous today. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I think Blood of the Daleks is a really good, solid story. It introduces the companion. It has a wonderful story has wonderful classic undertones to it. It is just a fantastic story. It's a very fast-paced moving story, but still has time to explore all these wonderful classic sort of Dalek story elements within it. So yeah, Blood of the Daleks, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. It's a good solid story. What definitely makes you want to listen to more Ape Doctor and Lucy adventures. It's just a wonderful story, and it really is the start of something magical. So thank you very much for watching this review. I hope you have enjoyed it, and I'll see you on my next Big Finish review what could be many things. It could be either the Legacy of Time, it could be the Sirens of Time, it could be Memories of a Tyrant, it could be many Big Finish things, because I've got so many Big Finish I want to review. Uh, so yeah, it could be the Further Adventures of Lucy Miller, who knows? Um, so yeah, stay tuned to find out what that next video will be. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching this review, hope you have enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. So thank you very much, and goodbye.